is being transformed in the spirit of your mind because we are all faced with a battle in our mind. The Lord wants to get to you a good word, a good word of encouragement, a word that will help you uh, study his word and, and understand his word. The Holy Spirit does that and it can change your whole life with one word, one, one word of encouragement. And uh, that, that's, that's what we want. We want to hear God's word. And the other hand, the devil also wants to steal that word, the word that God wants you to receive and have it planted in your heart. Romans chapter 8, verse 6, tells us that to be spiritually minded... And I'm going to explain what that means in just a minute. To be spiritually minded, or to be carnally minded, let's start with that. To be carnally minded is death. What that means is to be worldly minded. It also means to be a negative minded person. And we, we talked before about breaking negative strongholds. You see, you'll get a thought from the world, a thought from a person who, who uh, says something negative to you, and if you dwell on that thought, it's like receiving that thought. A thought of fear, a thought of worry, all of those things can develop and establish a stronghold in your thinking. And a stronghold, that means that you're not able to advance any farther because this thing's got a hold of you. If it's an addiction, that's a stronghold. So a lot of times people talk about spiritual warfare. And one of the predominant things that we have to war against is a stronghold in our thinking. Yeah. You, can, you can entertain thoughts of worry and fear and doubt and unbelief, and they become a mindset. Definition of a mindset is you've got, you're stuck. It's set. It becomes, and it becomes more cemented or more solid as you think about it and dwell on it. That's why it's so important for us to dwell on the Word of God, because the Word of God is the only thing that can break a negative stronghold. We've talked about, last week we talked about winning the battle of the mind. And we're not talking about the world's way of thinking, positive thinking. No, what we're talking about is positive faith thinking. Amen. And you can also have negative faith. If you have faith in something negative, then th that's what you believe. And if you believe it strongly enough, it's hard to break that. And so when we talked about last week, we talked about winning the battle of the mind. Well, you can also lose the battle of the mind. Right. Yeah. If you want to watch the reruns of your past, if you want to watch reruns all day about something negative that you're worried will happen, a lot of times we worry a lot about things that are never going to happen. Yeah. And that's faith in the negative, believing something that you can't see, and you really don't even have any evidence that it's going to take place. It's all a mindset that the devil has, he's, he's established a stronghold in your thinking. Now, I'm going to go more into that in a few minutes. A carnal mind, that's what we're talking about, a carnal mind. So a believer, and by the way, the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans is writing to believers. And he says, for to be carnally minded is death. Everything negative, negative circumstances, negative uh, you could call sickness in the negative. Everything that's negative 
can establish itself and it can get worse and worse. Uh, just take this, take the common cold. We don't think it's, we don't think much of it, but driven to its full extent could cause you to die. It could, it, it could grow into something worse and then worse on top of that, and it could cause death. So death, when the Bible talks about death, it's talking about some simple form of death that's leading to, ultimately, you die, right? So being carnally minded, if someone is addicted to something, alcohol, drugs, food, whatever, it's, it's established stronghold, and it can lead to death. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. A carnal mind is not a good thing. <laughs> if it's filled, if a, a mind is totally filled and consumed with worry, doubt, and fear, that's carnal. It's the opposite of having a spiritually strong mind. So here's what it says about that. It says, but to be spiritually minded is life, the opposite of death, life and peace. So really, what do we really want? I mean, people go to great lengths to buy some peace. People go on exotic vacations and, and they buy extravagant things, houses and cars and whatever, even to the extent that they're deep in debt. And the whole reason they do that is to find life and peace. Yeah. See, peace of mind is so valuable and a spiritually strong mind is way more valuable than we think it is. Yes. It's more valuable than gold, the Bible says. The word of the Lord, more valuable than gold and silver. And you might not believe me today, but listen, sooner or later you're going to discover that the only real peace, the only real joy, the only real happiness is in God, our Savior, Amen. in the Lord Jesus. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and peace, because Jesus said, I am peace for you, the Prince of Peace, everything that you need is in Christ Jesus. And a lot of times we seek it in other ways. We say, whoa, if I only had a bigger house, if I had a better car, if I had this or I had that. Really, all you need is Jesus. And if you have him and you're a student of the, of the word, which is Jesus, you're a disciple, a follower of Jesus, then the Bible promises that you'll receive everything that you need. Amen. Without worry, without fear, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things you need will be given to you. You and I have the power to change from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. You have been given the miraculous gift of being a new creation in Christ. Simply by what we did this morning, we confessed Jesus as our Savior. We believe that he was raised from the dead. God does a miracle on the inside. Yes, he does. God doesn't do a miracle in your thinking. That's up to you and me. Because the word of God tells us that we should not be carnally mind, minded, but be spiritually minded. And the only way to transform your thinking and transform your mind is by you renewing your mind with God's promises. Yeah. And last year's manna is not good for this year. Well, I went to Bible school 10 years ago. You need manna today, Amen. not from 10 years ago. Yes. Manna is fresh word from the heaven, from the heavens and from God Almighty, your creator, yes. my creator. Yes. 
Let's turn to Philippians. This is, so, this is so important. You have power to change because you've also been asked, you've asked the Lord to fill you or baptize you with the Holy Spirit and power. And Jesus said, when I go away, the Holy Spirit is going to come and be your teacher. He's going to lead you and guide you into all the truth. Not just some of it, all the truth. The Holy Spirit is the great teacher, and he will remind you of all the things that Jesus said when he was on the earth. Yeah. Philippians 4, verse 6. Here's the word of the Lord for you this morning, every one of you, not for someone you know that isn't in church. Oh, I wish Uncle Bob was in church with me today. No, this word is for you and me right now. Be anxious for nothing. How, how much does in, is included in nothing? Nothing means don't be anxious, don't be fearful, don't be worried about anything. Oh, well, yes, but I have to worry about my children. No, we cast all of our cares over on the Lord because you are not God and you cannot always be the answer for your children, especially when they grow up and they're bigger than you. Then <laughs> they're going to have to make their own decision to follow Jesus. Amen. You're going to have to cast the care of them over on the Lord. Amen. Be anxious for nothing, but by everything, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, you're watching over my child. Whether they're two or 42. You're watching over my child. I thank you that you've made a way for them. All they have to do is open up their heart and receive. I thank you, Lord God, that you've done all the work for them. All they have to do is receive. With thanksgiving, prayer and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And because you don't have any worries or concerns that you're grabbing onto and letting them establish a stronghold. You're not. You're casting your care over on the Lord. Because of that, the peace of God will surpass all your understanding. You don't have to figure everything out. The Word of God says, lean not to your own understanding. You don't have to figure things out. But trust in the Lord. Come on, everybody say, trust in the Lord. Come on, say it again. Trust in the Lord. If you're worried and fearful and, and all of the rest, you're not trusting in the Lord. Can you see? God can do what you can't do. He can do way above all you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. The Bible says. So your job is to let the power of God work in you. Yeah. Renew your mind. Let your mind be transformed to God's higher way of thinking. Yes. And the peace of God will be way beyond what you can ask or think. Amen. The peace of God, that's what we really need. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds Amen. through Christ Jesus. We always say this as, as a, serv as a serv service already, always ends. We say, let the peace of God rule in your heart. If you don't have peace about what you're hearing, about what thoughts you're entertaining, then you need to cast those thoughts down. We read this before. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says that we're in a battle. Don't, don't turn there. We're in a warfare. Not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not worldly. They're not by our own strength. They're by the strength that God gives. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes. Not our own strength. So when thoughts come, 
If we don't have peace about that thought, if it's not bringing us peace, we have to cast it down. According to the Greek, the Bible says, throw down. I mean, actually throw it down. Get rid of that thought. Don't let it establish a stronghold. Don't entertain the wrong thoughts. But trust in the Lord. I'll tell you what, this is a good sermon right here yes, for every single person because you are faced, and I, I don't remember what I told you before, the first, when we first started this series about being transformed by renewing our mind, I told you that each and every day we have 40,000 thoughts. I believe it was something in that neighborhood. That's a lot of thoughts. Come and try to establish a stronghold. Yes. If you're watching television, they'll tell you the big flu is waiting on you. And if you let that establish a stronghold, guess what? You believe that now. And you'll start saying things. And that's where your big mistake comes in. Because your words, when words are spoken, that's the most powerful thing in the whole wide universe. Amen. Your words, God created the whole universe with words. Yes. Your words are not as powerful as God's, but your words have power because God established it that way. He created us in his image and in his likeness. So therefore, we can choose our own words just like God chooses his own words. And God said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you want to destroy a marriage, just let the words fly. <laughs> Anything, any thought that comes to your head, just speak it out, right? Is that how to make a good relationship? No. If a thought comes to your mind, it doesn't produce peace, cast it down. Somebody ought to write that down. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. <laughs> Do you want to conquer some bad habits? Absolutely. You need to transform. Let your mind be transformed. Whatever it is. See, some of us have let a stronghold be established with some bad habits. What are some bad habits? Being real touchy. Easily angered. <laughs> let, me, let me do something for you here. This will help you a lot. It's going to sting a little bit. But let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. And, and, and the reason I say this is because this is a lot more powerful than we think it is. When God recreated your spirit, he gave you a new spirit on the inside. He also gave you the fruit of the spirit. He established that in you. It was much more of a miracle than we think it is. Galatians chapter 5, and let's look at verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is the lust of the flesh? Carnally minded, worldly minded, a mind filled with negativity that's eventually spoken out of our mouth. Walk in the Spirit. Let the Spirit lead you and guide you into all the truth, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Spirit of God is leading you into all truth. The Spirit of God wants to reveal to you who you are in Christ. God established who you are in Christ. You're His very, God the Father's very own child. You are royalty. The Bible says you've been made a priest and a king yes. on the inside. Yes. But most of us don't walk in that because we haven't renewed our mind to that. Yes. We ought to read that every, every day. 
from the Apostle Peter that we've been made a king and a priest. A king meaning we have authority in the earth. And a priest means that we live a holy life unto God, praying always with all prayer, with thanksgiving. Yes, we're a king and a priest. So Jesus said this. He said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Yeah. So when the devil comes knocking at your door with sickness or trouble or disaster, you say, no way, Jose. Get out of this house. You can't come near here with trouble. I cast you out. I, I cast you out, devil, yeah. in the name of Jesus. That's your kingly position. And then you go to thanking the Lord you, as a priest. You humble yourself unto the Lord and let him exalt you. Amen. Yes. So what are we talking about today? Conforming, the, we read this many times. We've read from uh, Romans 12 2. We've read, don't be conformed to this world. Conforming to this world, don't turn there. Conforming builds unbelief and a carnal mind. Am I switching that? Conforming builds unbelief and a carnal mind. Or a mind filled with fear and worry and negativity. Conforming to the world. And that is a person who isn't overwhelmingly renewing his mind with the Word of God. Renewing. Constantly letting your mind be renewed to the fact that you are a child of God. A child of the King. You have been given authority. You've been given power with the Holy Spirit of God. And you've been made a priest unto God. So Romans then tells us don't be conformed, but be transformed by renewing your mind that you will prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you're renewing what's the perfect will of God? His word. His word is his bond. If his word is no good, he's no good. If a man or a woman's word is no good, then they're no good. But God is good. And if you're a child of God, your word is good. Amen. We can prove, what does that mean? We prove, we renew our mind to who we are in Christ. We're not just a normal, natural being anymore. The Apostle Paul said this all the time. How come, how come you're acting like a natural man? You've been transformed into a spiritual being, one that has power, and one who has the fruit of the Spirit. So here we are with Galatians chapter 5, and let's go to, well, I'm going to skip the works of the flesh. You already know that, adultery, fornication, selfish ambitions, all those kind of things. Let's go down to 22. This is the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Well, let's just pick out a few of them. If you have no self-control, you're carnally minded. You're worldly minded. You're not spiritually minded. Because if you were spiritually minded to recognize that you have self-control, it's one of the fruit of the Spirit, you have it, then you're going to prove that to the world. You're going to prove the will of God to the world by being, being spiritually minded, full of life and peace. But if you're uncontrolled, if you have no self-control, then you're carnally minded. If you do not walk in love, you're carnally minded. Are we clear on what carnally minded is? If you're not kind, meaning kind to people, <laughs> kind to people. If you're not kind, you're carnal. 
Just read all of them, all the fruit of the Spirit. Faithfulness. If we're not faithful unto the Lord, we're carnal. Everybody's looking so serious, you ought to smile, and then, then nobody would know I'm talking about you. <laughs> Just look straight ahead. Don't look at the person next to you. So are we, are we straight on what carnally minded is now? It's opposite of all the gifts that God wants us to walk in. We, we always look at the world. We're looking at the world to, uh, and, and without even knowing it, if you're not a student, a disciple of the Word of God, if you don't pray very much, if you're not humble before the Lord, then you're going to be carnal just because you live in the world. You live here. You have to do something strongly. You have to do something to go against the current because the whole world, the Bible says this, the whole world, and that includes me and you, are under the sway of the devil. If you just stand still and do nothing, you don't have your Bible open. You're not listening to the Word of God. You're not watching a good video, somebody preaching to you. If you're not doing any of those things, you're going with the flow. You're going backwards because the flow is carrying you downstream. If you want to go upstream, you're going to have to be determined and go upstream Amen. with all your heart, soul, and strength. Seek the Lord, and you'll come out on top, because it's not just your strength, it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Do you see where we're at here now? You have a choice. We all have a choice to go the way God has laid things out to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. It's going in the negative flow. So what, what happens? You're, when you go with that flow, you, you hate your job. You hate everybody around you. <laughs> you're going in a negative flow. You can't get along with anybody because you're not displaying the fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. You're going with the negative flow. The devil's trying to pull you down into his way of thinking. We don't want to copy the world. We want to copy the Lord our God. One of the messages that we had in Sunday's past talking about this tr transforming is that we would want to become like Jesus, more like Jesus, don't we? Which is what a student of the word is. A disciple is a follower of Jesus. The Apostle Paul said, said this a lot. He said, he said, follow me as I follow the Lord. And, and uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says that we should be imitators of God, imitators of Jesus. Isn't that right? Walking, talking, more, we're never going to be Jesus. We're never going to be, be God, right? But we're going to be imitators of God. We want to imitate him. That's why that, that, that old saying, I, matter of fact, I used to make fun of it a little bit. I'll be honest with you. What would Jesus do? And then people had bracelets and they had bumper stickers and all that. But it's true. If you're walking in life, would Jesus do what you're doing? Throwing a fit at the traffic light because it won't change fast enough? <laughs> would Jesus do that? I don't think so, because he displayed all the fruit of the Spirit all the time. Yeah. First Corinthians, don't turn there. First Corinthians chapter 13 is called the love chapter from verse 4 to verse 8. Love never fails. Isn't that right? Love never fails. Because why is that? 
because God is love. He is, he doesn't have love, he is love. So if you want to walk your love walk, love, joy, peace, patience, you're imitating God. Amen. So you have self-control. You don't have to blow up at every little thing. And by the way, almost everything is a little thing compared to eternity. I mean, think about, well, don't think about it too much, but just think for a second about all the things that we argue about, that we disagree about. They're just little things, and they grow into big things. A little thing can grow when you think about it and think about it and think about it. Pretty soon, it's a stronghold, and everybody that touches you, hey, did you touch me? You want to step outside. <laughs> so what? They touched you. <laughs> I mean, don't we do that? Yeah. Sure. You might as well say amen, or you could say, oh me. It's all the same anyway. We get, we get out of the fruit of the Spirit, and we get carnally minded. That's why we're so touchy. That's why we're, we're easily angered. Well, would you, would you take a look at what they just did to me? They cut in line in front of you in traffic or at the grocery store, either way, and you get all red in the face, but what, what did that accomplish? No, love never fails, right? Anger always fails. <laughs> it's bringing you down to the devil's depth, bringing you down to where he resides. Instead of God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. If you want to be an imitator of God, you're going to have to come up to a new level. You're going to have to Put away carnal thinking and get spiritually minded. Isn't that true? Amen. Come on, let's all stand. Father, we give you thanks and praise for everything you've given us in your word, a way to live. You've given us a, the right way to go, the right way to think, and the right way to, that everyone, everything would turn out. Now, Father, I'm also asking you to multiply the seeds sown this morning, the offering that was given, the, the tithes that were given. I'm asking you to multiply just like you did the fish and the bread so that more people can be saved and healed, filled with the Spirit, and set free in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for it. And Father, we're also asking for your help by your Spirit, Lord God. Help us to walk as your children, walk in the Spirit, walk in love, walk by faith and not by sight. We're asking for your help, Lord God. All this week, especially, Holy Spirit, please remind us every time we turn around, remind us who, of who we are in Christ Jesus, who you made us to be, the, the mindset that we should have. Remind us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And everybody agrees with that? Said amen. amen. All right.